I was riding down a hill about 19 miles an hour when all of a sudden I felt this pull from underneath me and the bike flipped out from underneath me and I flew head first into the asphalt. And as the asphalt came towards my face, it was about stopped right here and I could see the asphalt as it moved about an inch from my face. It was the helmet that saved my life that day. I'm going to share a story today about what happened in 2014 that led me to my path that I'm now on as a financial coach. And this is a little different than what I normally share. However, I feel that it's important to share this for both anyone that is struggling with a brain injury and also anyone who is struggling being in a job or a position or even in your own online business and not enjoying it anymore. We're going through a traumatic, dramatic shift in the world right now. And we have a choice. We have a choice and it doesn't need to be something this drastic to put us in the path that we're meant to be on. My name is Amber Duggar. For those of you who are just new and finding my channel, welcome. I am a financial and profit first professional coach, and I am the founder of Profit for Keeps. And we have so much content on money mindset, wealth building, profitability, and really just improving a relationship with money. We also specialize in running a program that uses YNAB or You Need a Budget and Profit First. And so you can check out some of our other videos for that as well. But I wanted to share with you, as many of you have asked this in the past, how did you get into what you do now? Well, I can tell you right now, I did not plan on going into any anything to do with money or business. But let's get back to that story. So if you just go back a little bit, I was in corporate finance and I was really not enjoying my job. My soul was dying a little bit every day in my cubicle. I was working for a company that was a government uh, consulting or contracting agency. We worked for the State Department and for the FAA and for a lot of different federal government organizations. And I would go in every single day and oftentimes would not leave until very late at night. There were times when I remember eating pizza, cold pizza, off of my desk at two in the morning, also being expected to be back at work the next day. So it was not that great of an environment. It was extremely toxic. It was a lot of um, work and not a lot of appreciation. But one of my top values is responsibility. And for a very long time, I did not understand that I actually had a choice and could remove myself from that. But let's get back to this accident. So I had been riding my bike to work regularly because I was trying to bring in things that really brought me joy, such as gardening, riding my bike, not, dry, not sitting in traffic. If anyone is from the DC area, you know very well how bad traffic is in the DC area. And so I started riding my bike. While well, I started getting more and more into biking and more into transportation, I even wanted to move to the Netherlands for a while. <laughs> I wanted to move to, you know, Portland, Oregon, just because there were so many places that you could regularly bike and not have to worry about getting hit by cars. Um, but what I would do is I would do a hybrid model. So I would get on a bus, I would take a bus to a, a path, and then I would take the path down. And I just remember every morning feeling like I was on this adventure, at least for about 15 minutes in the morning, and then more like an hour on the way back. So I wouldn't take the bus on the way back. Well, I purchased this bike. Her name was Betty Foy. And she was baby blue, had Portuguese uh, court grips, really beautiful steel lugged bike, it had little hearts on it. It was, it was a beautiful bike. I spent over $4,000 on this bike I'd saved for quite a while. And at the time I was feeling like this is going to be life-changing for me. Well, little did I know how life-changing this bike was going to be. Unfortunately, it was not put together properly. And so when I was riding on that fateful day, the brakes came off of the bike and it kind of fell forward, which clamped the brakes onto the front wheel and it actually bent the fork back with so much torque that launched me off that bike. Luckily, I did not get hit by a car. Everyone that saw this happen was in a neighborhood and they actually all rushed out to help me. And what I'm not sharing here right now is what had happened three days before this. 
I was in such a dark place that I was having trouble even coming up with one thing on my gratitude list. My husband had, it was my fiance at the time, but he had encouraged me to start writing gratitude list. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Like, what am I grateful for? I mean, it's just, it's interesting the perspective now that I have versus back then. And I remember writing something like, I'm grateful I can ride my bike to work. And I tried to come up with a couple of other things. But after this bike accident, and I was just sitting there on the ground and I never blacked out. I had a pretty big road rash on the side of the face, but I didn't have any missing teeth. I could breathe through my nose. I could see out of both of my eyes. And all of a sudden I was just like in this state of complete and total gratitude that it was not worse than it was. Well, fast forward to the hospital. I had two brain scans. I had 34 x-rays, no broken bones, no open head injury. So they said, okay, you can go home after about six hours. Well, The next morning I woke up and it was like completely unlike anything I've ever experienced. Like I felt like Jacqueline Hyde. One side of my face was completely blown up and the other side looked normal. And I remember taking a mirror and going, you know, (laughs) just like, I cannot believe how different this looks. But I remember writing in my gratitude journal, both when I got home and then the next day when I got home, I am so grateful to be alive. And then the next morning I wrote several things. I'm so grateful to be able to breathe. I'm so grateful to be able to eat. I'm so grateful to have all of my teeth. I'm so grateful that I could walk. About six weeks went by and I went back to work and my face was completely healed. I had done green juices. I was doing all these things to help my body heal. But it wasn't until I got back to work that I realized that there was something significantly wrong. It sounded as if everyone was talking to me with this huge microphone. I ended up going to a neurologist and find out that I not only had an abnormal EKG, but also a pretty significant uh, MTBI, which means minor traumatic brain injury. In other words, a concussion. Concussions, as you know, can vary significantly. And this particular one was having me really have trouble with anyone talking to me. I was, I couldn't go anywhere that was loud. And it was this odd, almost silent and not visible issue because I looked completely fine after six weeks, but my brain was not working properly. So over the next year, I was actually home recovering. And during that time I was working still from home, but this was in 2014. And if those of you that remember, we had this government sequestration, meaning that the government could not decide how we were going to come up with the money for the budget. And so they ended up just halting all work for the most part. And so I was working in pricing, which was on the sales side of getting these multi-million dollar contracts into our company. And so during that time, I had listened to a podcast about health coaching and I was like, oh my gosh, I am so going to do that. Um, And so what I ended up doing was joining uh, from some of you probably have been to this school or gone to this school as Institute of Integrative Nutrition. I always refer to that as a gateway to entrepreneurship for myself because I am the last person that was planning on running a business. Um, And during that time, I went 30 hours a week doing this health coaching while I was just waiting to do work. There just really wasn't any work. We were just waiting for the government to make up its mind. So I used that time to start going through this program. I was determined that I was going to not only succeed in this school, but I was going to also succeed in a new career as a health coach. And six months into this program, I was allowed to start seeing clients. So six months on the day, I got my first client and that's when (laughs) I realized, oh my gosh, running a business is so different than running a multi-million dollar corporation. What the heck am I supposed to do with this $800? (laughs) Remember I got $800 into my bank account. I thought, okay, well, I know for sure I'm going to owe taxes on this. So I took, I think 25% of that $800 and just put it into um, another line. I did use YNAB at the time. I had a separate budget for it and I did put it into a separate bank account. So 
I knew that I needed to have that separate. Other than that was like, if I don't know what we're supposed to do here, how the heck is everyone else doing this? And so over the next six months, as I finished my certification, I got, I continued to get new clients. So 12 months to the day of when I started this program, I left my corporate job. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. At this point, my brain was pretty much healed. Um, so I thought anyway, <laughs> we're talking, uh, let's see now it's eight years later and I still have some, some residual things going on, but for the most part, it was, it was healed for sure. And I get home and I'm like, okay, I am going to make it as a health coach. It was the scariest thing I have ever done because I was definitely not bringing in the right amount of money to sustain myself. I had cut down all of my expenses and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I spent about three weeks doing this and then realized I need to get the heck out of here. I could not be in this environment looking at everyone still in corporate. What? And I was just like constantly thinking, you are an idiot. Why did you leave your job? This is the worst idea ever. I mean, I was really speaking negatively to myself. So I heard another podcast. I'm a knitter. So podcasting has always been a huge thing for me because I love knitting and, and listening at the same time. I heard another uh, health coach on this podcast. She's a very dear friend of mine now. Um, and her name is Laura and she was with happy sugar habits. She was a health coach and she was living in Bali. She was from London and she was sharing her story about how she just felt such like a fish out of water when she left her corporate job and needed to be around like-minded people. So she had moved to Bali, joined this uh, group called tribe wanted and that was when I was like, oh my gosh, that is happening. I am doing this. So three weeks later, I was saying goodbye to my boyfriend and my dog, and I was on the next flight out to Bali. It was scary, scary, scary. I had a three-day hotel reservation, and that was it. Now, I had done my research. I'm a Colby 9 uh, fact finder, and I knew that that was the best way to do it. Just get there, get your feet wet. You're going to find the right place for you, and then everything is going to work out just fine. I get to Bali, and that is where I found out that there are so many entrepreneurs that are definitely struggling when it comes to figuring out that money thing. So I then realized, okay, so it's not just me. A lot of people don't really know what to do with money. And on top of that, it's not the bookkeeping we have to worry about. It's the, how am I going to pay for my personal bills? How do I keep my business expenses separate? How do I make sure that I'm still profitable? How do I pay myself consistently? I'm used to a paycheck every couple of weeks. And so I started to talk to different people in the co-working space. It was amazing. It was like all bamboo. It was called Ubud in Ubud, <laughs> Bali. And everyone was asking me like, what system are you using? What is this? And so I started to show YNAB and how I was using it for my business. And that quickly spread. And people were asking, oh my gosh, you need to share this and you need to put, do a skill share about this. So I created, you know, a fancy presentation <laughs> and I started speaking about not only the practical sides of money, but also how I was managing this from a mindset perspective, because I was quite scared that I was going to be running out of money pretty much every day, even with the system in place. When I could see that I had money, I had savings, I had money coming in, I was putting the money into the, the spots, but I was still feeling like, oh my gosh, if you don't keep making more money, you're going to run out of money. That was what I kept hearing in my brain. So I decided, you know what, I need some support here. I had just met Kate Northrup about a year ago. I was in her B-School group and she had written Money, A Love Story. And I said, we're going to do money love dates and we're going to have them every Friday. I want you to bring kombucha or wine, whatever you want. Wine's really, really awful in Bali. So most people brought kombucha, <laughs> but we all would sit around and talk about how we felt about money. And it was the most eye-opening thing I have ever done. As so I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one freaking out about this. I'm not the only one that's feeling like, oh my gosh, 
what am I doing here? I'm going to run out of money. And then there were other people that were completely not worried about that until they would get their credit card bill. And then they'd be like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? So there are different varying levels of fear and also just apprehension because there wasn't a lot of knowledge or information out there to manage your cash flow when you were a digital nomad or living over overseas. So I went quickly into interview mode. And I started talking to everyone about their relationship with money, what they struggled with. And I realized very quickly that while health coaching was, was great and I learned a lot from it, it was not what I wanted to do. It, I felt like it was so draining having these calls with people. And so I knew that I needed to perhaps pivot a bit. And so with some encouragement with different people in my group, I decided back in 2015 to pivot from health coaching to money coaching. And I struggled with that because I was getting a lot of, you know, pushback from my health coaching mentor. And, you know, I was being told, oh, health is the way to go. We really shouldn't be, you know, going off into something else. And I just knew deep down, and this is where this inner wisdom comes in. This was my path. I never thought I would touch money again with a 10 foot pole, but when I saw that there was my own experience with money, managing it from a personal perspective, using YNAB for so long, but then also learning the coaching side and creating space and, and recognizing that money is 99% behavioral and emotional, I saw that there was this gap that people were not addressing the fact that as entrepreneurs, we can hire accountants, we can hire bookkeepers, but they're not going to help us with paying ourselves regularly. They're not going to help us with managing our bills. They're not going to help us with making sure that personally we are taken care of. That's what I knew we needed to focus on. So very quickly, um, that moved into me meeting Mike McCallowitz. He's now a very, very good friend of mine. He's the author of Profit First. We started to, to implement Profit First, but from a perspective that really helps a coach or an online business by reverse engineering it, uh, reverse engineering the revenue goal, not implementing it the way that the book was. And so there's much more to this story, but that's really where I got started. And I can tell you that when you're starting a business, there are so many things you have to do. It feels like anyway, right? Like, oh, website and email lists and all these other things. But ultimately, the most important thing is that you have a way to get paid. You have a space for that money to come in. You have a way for people to book a call with you. And you have a clear service that you know is going to make a huge difference for that person. And you talk about it all the time. That's ultimately the main things you need. And so from a money perspective, having that foundation of, okay, I need to know how much I need to be making now to cover the things that I need to pay for right now. You can worry about impact after your survival is intact, after you can say, yes, I can pay my bills. Impact, that needs to be something that you focus on once you have a sustainable business. I wish someone had told me that when I first started. I felt so guilty about you know, wanting to be able to pay my bills. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not one of those people. Am I that is just worried about paying my own bills and not really caring about the impact? Obviously I cared about the impact, but if we only focus on the impact and don't worry about being viable, we will not succeed. We will not continue to be sustainable. So there's so much more I could share here, but I'd love to hear in the comments below what resonated with you, if you'd like to hear more about this story, <laughs> uh, what questions you may have, or if you've been in a similar situation. But that is the reason why I now do what I do, because I knew that very early on, there was not someone addressing these issues. And today we've helped thousands of coaches not only pay themselves regularly, but feel empowered, know exactly what to do with their money and have really reconciled and mended their relationship with money. 
And so I want to thank you for being here. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps us get this in front of other people as well. And I'd love to hear your story. How did you get started in business? All right. Until next time, much love to you. And if you haven't yet already, sign up for our masterclass series. It is five things to be permanently profitable in your business. And you can go to amberduggercom waitlist. All right. Until next time, much love. Bye.